Right guys, welcome back to Caravan Carpers. You join me in the Tackle Shack for another Tackle Tuesdays. In this Tackle Tuesdays, what I'm going to be going over is my solid bag fishing setup and what I use and the reasons for using it. So, nowadays you find, and especially from the videos where I've asked what people's winter tactic is, they talk that solid bag is one of the main things that they fish, you know, and it's really, really popular on the scene nowadays. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through my solid bag fishing and so how i do my solid bags lends to the fact that at the minute i don't really get loads of time to do preparation so tying solid bags on the bank can sometimes be a bit of a pain but the way i do it in my little system it makes that easier for you so the next time you're out you're able to get fishing quicker and that's how it works for me the rig that i use is not a wonder rig you know it's an adapted type of rig that's really popular However, it's been adapted for use in a solid bag. And I've found recently, since using this rig, I've upped my catch rate and every fish that I've had has been properly nailed right in the middle of the mouth. So I'm dead happy with it, you know. It might not suit you, you know, and everybody should angle to how it suits them. It's just, this is what suits me. I can't really claim that I'm the creator of this rig, you know, it's a, a genuinely popular rig. And a friend of mine, Stu Smith of Stu Smith's Custom Rods, is a person that showed it me. And since then, it's completely transformed how I fish solid bags. And I've adapted a few little things to suit me. So what I'm also going to be doing is I'm going to be going over uh, what's in my solid bag bucket. You know, this bucket comes with me 95% of all my fishing. It's either in the van or with me on the bank. And then I'll take you through the components that I'm using and then just give you a final little demonstration as to the solid bag presentation and what it looks like using the, uh, the rig tank. So I'm not here to tell you go and buy these components, but the components I use are the components I've bought and have used regularly for my fishing and that's what I'm confident in. So you use what you're confident in at the end of the day and most of these materials and, and bits and bobs within this rig can be found in most people's tackle boxes. Um, if you are interested in any of the components or not sure which ones I'm using, then I'll put links in the description to everything that's being used. So, how I fish my solid bags and how it's changed. So I've never been a massive fan of solid bag fishing and how Luke completely hates solid bag fishing. I'll just stick you a little video in now for you to have a laugh at his debacle that we had when we was fishing at Norton Disney the other week. And you can laugh at that. Luke, tell us what you think about solid bags. <laughs> Without the swear words, we're not allowed swear words. Not very good. Luke's now a fan of the old solid bags. Luke used to be a bit of a casting master to be honest and he's struggling a bit with the old solid bags. He's not a fan. I think it's the pressure of the camera for him that's doing him in, you know. Now I've got a tight gap to put a little solid bag in and probably it is the size of a bin lid. Um, I'm just struggling at the moment. I've just had to tie, I've not got many more tied up. So this is my last one. It's got to be on the money. Stop moving it, I'm trying to video what you mop it. It's got to be on the money. And hopefully the red bullet hole will give me a fish. Right, so these are now the components that I use to tie my solid bag and I'll show you a completed rig in a minute. So first and foremost, we'll start at the business end. Generally, I tend to use a wafter. In this case, it is a Parker Bates OG fruit wafter that I'm currently testing at the minute. That is attached using bait floss. The reason I use the corder bait floss is basically because it fits in my tackle box. That's the only reason bait floss is bait floss. Whether it's a cheap one, expensive one, it's basically dental floss. So I then attach my bait to a micro rig ring swivel and I attach that swivel to a hook using a small uh, hook bead. The hook of choice for this is a Hobwama size six offset hook. And the reason I use that hook is because I like the way the shank of the hook is offset. What that does is it's for me, I feel that's where I'm getting that really good hooking potential. And there are other brands who do a similar offset curved hook. So if you've got them, that's what I'd use. You know, you can use a wide gape hook or anything like that, or a hook of choice that you, you decide, but that's just the hook that works for me. I then attach the hook to a spinner swivel or S swivel as they're called at Hobo Armor. And before I do that, I slide a little bit of silicone up the hook 
attach the spinner swivel and then slide the silicone back down and I basically just melt it with a lighter. I don't bother steaming it. You can steam it and I've never had any issues with that. Just a quick few little licks of the flame and that'll uh, have it shrunk down perfect for you. I then cut the actual ring off the spinner swivel and the reason I cut this off is because I like the direct attachment from the uncoated braid to the bottom of the actual spinner swivel. And I then add some um, tungsten putty. This is obviously imperative if you're using something like a 12 mil mold pop-up, which I use for my solid bags or wafters, but I generally tend to go with a wafter. And that tungsten putty then just balances it. I also find I like a little bit of weight at the bottom of the rig in order to keep the rig in the, the bottom of the rig in the down position. So I feel like it catches the, the fish's mouth on the way out. And that's the reason I do that. So I'll show you a completed rig. And this is a completed rig that I use, you know, short length for the uncoated braid. I use a Palomar knot to the actual uh, spinner swivel itself when I've cut the ring off. And then all I do is I mould a small amount of putty around the bottom of there in order to balance it. And As I've showed you now how it's tied, you know, I could, I could go more in depth into that. And if anybody's really interested in a guide to tying that rig, I'll make one and put one on Instagram, but it's pretty simple. So what I really like about this, the way I'm fishing this is that you can cut the hook off at the silicone there. And as I carry a Stanley knife in my um, tackle box for that reason. And I'll just cut the silicone off there and you can pull the hook off and then replace it with a new hook. So you can have new baits can be changed quite easily. You know, you just take the hook bead off. Obviously it's a bit more of a pain if you're using a barbless hook, but I keep these booms made up and I've got loads of these little booms with the spinner swivels on them, uh, ready to go. So I can do really quickly rather than having to tie an entire rig and rechange all this bit. I just changed the hook to suit and I found that sped my angling up no end because it's just really quick and I'm, I'm dead happy with that. So what I do is I pin these made up to a rig board ready to just slide over with a bit of silicone ready to go. And that means I can just change really quick, you know, and it makes me nice and efficient. So I'll take you through now what's in my solid bags bucket and we'll go through that side of it. We'll tie up a solid bag and then we will then show you what it looks like in the tank. Right, so I'm now going to take you through what's in my solid bag bucket and this is basically what the contents are most of the time. The only thing I'll have in summer differently is I'll have a bottle of hemp oil in there which I tend to dip my solid bags in to prevent them um, melting as such or also to just give off some attraction. So the solid bags I tend to use are the Fox Rapide, the 60 by 130 is the size and the reason I use these is I've always come back to them. I've always found that I'm most confident in these. I like the size and I've never had any issues with them. Um, I do keep the scoop from the Corda um, solid bag set that you get, you know, with the solid bags, but I just find it really handy for scooping pellets into my mix. And I also use a ground bait that I put into the bottom or the Parker baits, magic dust that gets used. And I'll use that scoop in order to, you know, scoop it out the bottom when I need to, and then scoop it into the bag, you know, and it works really well that, so. That's something I use and I'm, I'm really happy with. Um, I tend to tie my bags off with PVA tape. I don't do the lick and stick method. Some people do, I don't. Um, and then I have a couple of little things. I've just bought the Smart Liquid recently. It's something I've just started using. And to be honest, I, I quite like it. You know, it smells nice. Um, not really caught anything with it yet, but that's in my bag. And then something I've had for ages and been using for ages, and I've gone through loads of this stuff, to be honest. I've got loads of the stock is the Hobo Armour Bonoffi Glaze. I tend to squirt that into my bags and I find that that's up my catch rate slightly, but that's just what I've got confidence in. One thing I do keep in here is I keep an old bag in here and I put my bag inside this for when I'm wrapping up with distance sticks and I found that works really well. It stops my bag getting wet and that might be something that helps you. It's something always to have in there and uh, I found it to be really good. So what I tend to put in the bottom of my solid bags is either I put a little bit of the Parker Bates uh, magic dust in there because it's got real good attraction to it, I believe. And then I use Carbon Bates' own um, Zig Mix and it's got a few other little bits in there. It's a Zig, um, Zig soup basically that they use from Carbon Bates and I use that as the bottom ground bait in there. It's like a, you can use it as a stick mix and stuff like that and it's something that I really like. So I use, I have basically an, a small maggot tub with a solid lid 
in my um, basically that I take fishing with me and then I use that for making my side bags and this is always in the van with me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an old rig that I've got here um, it's like two and a half ounce lead and I use the I forget what these are called the shock leader sleeves I do like them because they're a little bit longer and I find that the tail rubbers don't pull off and that's my reason for using them um, and I found if I can use leaders uh, that, that's been always what I use I do sometimes use stems um, I've got all my stems are actually at the caravan because I fish quite a lot of solid bags there and I always tend to use uh, a flat pair lead I like the corder leads for uh, if I'm not dropping the lead I'll always use the corder leads and I don't know why it's just something that I've always used I think I, it's because they actually have the weight on which I like but they're the leads that I've always used and I found they work well so if I'm fishing up to say 15 wraps, I will use a two ounce lead. I know I can comfortably cast a two ounce lead in that solid bag, easy enough to that. And I like to use a, a nice lightweight lead because I might be fishing in silt and things like that. And the reason I use that then is so it doesn't sink into the silt. Uh, as I go further, so two and a half ounce lead, I can get to around 18 to 20 wraps at a push. And then beyond that, I'll either use a three or a three and a half. Um, for distance fishing but I don't fish solid bags at extreme range anyway and this is just an old rig so what I do with this rig is I just cut that off replace the hook but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bait on this I'm going to tie two of these up quickly and I will show you what they present like in the tank using either a wafter or a pop-up right so in this part of the video now I've got myself my wafter presentation in a solid bag and also my pop-up presentation and what I'll show you now is what each of these looks like underwater so take note what I have done is I've pierced the bags quite a few times in order to let the air out some people just put one big hole in the middle but this can lead to the bag lifting off the deck and we'll see what happens with that now I'm just going to drop them into the water and we will see how it reacts now and you'll see on my presentations that I use are if you look there now you can see that the bags haven't lifted because i've got holes everywhere what's happening now they're starting to lift because the bag's starting to split and the air's starting to mitigate about and what you'll find soon is the hook bait will be released pretty soon and also the um, pellets will start to spread out like any normal sort solid bag but what you're getting to see now is the breakdown of my presentations So there you've got your pop-up presentation which is sitting nice and proud and some of the ground bait has lifted off into the air and floated up and that's now spreading down slowly spreading like a nice cloud of attraction what you'll shortly start to see as that ground bait breaks off is you'll see the um you'll see the wafter actually start to emerge soon so the pellets that i use for my solid bags is a mixture of standard micro pellets uh, blood worm pellet and also uh, green betaine pellets and obviously you've got a little bit of that ground bait mix in there and what you can see down this edge here is the uh, blood worm pellet starting to leak off uh, their attraction which is a great great little trait of them pellets and that's why I tend to use them in my solid bags right so hopefully that now gives you an inkling of how i fish solid bags and how easy that rig is to tie and how quickly you can change them rigs and what i use uh, as you can see in the tank now it just leaves mega little piles of bait you know and then with that concoction of pellets that i'm using and dusts and things like that you can see that it lets off so much attraction you can understand why it nabs so many fish up and down the country Anyway, so from this video, we've now hit over 1,000 subscribers. So we're going to do our 1,000 subscriber giveaway. And a company that we've been involved with, we're doing loads of media for them. And I'm doing all their media in the background is Parker Bates. And it is a new bait company that I am really happy to be part of. You know, I'm loving being part of the media team. And I thought, why not? I will do a giveaway for Parker Bates. So what I'm going to give away as our 1,000 subscriber giveaway would be um two kilos of any size boilies that you decide be that the 10s the 14s the 18s dumbbells or round shaped boilies and also i'll give you one of the matching sauces which is used to glug your boilies and then the magic dust so if you aren't aware of parker baits i'll leave a link in the description of their website and they're also 
part of uh, YouTube themselves. They've got a great channel called Parker Brothers YouTube channel. If you haven't been in, over there, then check that out also. So in order to get involved with that giveaway, all I need you to do is like this video and then comment down below what you want to see going forward with the channel. You know, I've just invested in a second camera now, so I'm going to try and make these tackle shacks a little bit more interesting. We're just waiting on that coming. Hopefully, I believe it's here for the 15th of April, so that'll make it a little bit more cinematic. But I'm trying not to go over the top with that side of it and try and just keep it as real as I can with the tackle shocks and just give my honest opinions. But comment down below what you want to see out the channel. Obviously, I've got the distance video coming up soon. Uh, I'm hopefully going to be filming that on Thursday as long as I get to do what I need to do. Um, I'm going to be doing the Frontier uh, X bivy review and that's something that's going to be really interesting because I have had problems with that and I'll go through all them for you. Um, I've also got in the plan I'm going to be doing a Thinking Anglers luggage review and where I came with my luggage, a bit like I've done on my other tackle shacks. And yeah, all I need you to do is in the comments down below, once you've liked this video, tell me what you'd like to see out the channel. Tell me what you want me to do differently. Tell me what you like so far, you know, and just give us a bit of feedback on the channel. Do you know, good or bad, you know, don't make it just it's crap, you know, be constructive about it. And that's what I want. And for that, what I'll do is I'll give it a month and I will draw for a random draw like I did for my last giveaway and the winner will get uh, the bait directly from Parker Bait so I'll message Tom and Ben and let them know and pay for your bait and then all you need to do is get in touch with them and they they will send it to you so yeah thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one apologies on the late um, administration of this one tonight um, the kids have been ill to be honest so it's been a late one really so apologies for that, but we'll try and get them back on track for 7 o'clock, Tackle Tuesday. See you next week. Thanks for watching.